In this video, we'll explore how to set up and configure the internal and external connections required for both audio and MIDI. Let's begin with a basic map of the system, and then I'll show you how to connect the pieces together. The major external system components are your audio interface, and in these videos, we'll be using the Steinberg MR816X. You also have monitor speakers or headphones, input devices like microphones and instruments, a MIDI interface and a MIDI input device like a keyboard, and of course the various cables and power. Follow the manufacturer's instructions to connect things like amps and speakers, headphones and instruments. Connect the audio and MIDI interface to the computer using USB or FireWire as appropriate. As a general rule, you should turn on the external interface and then turn on the computer. Always make sure that you have the latest drivers for your interface. Even if your interface came with a CD of drivers, you should still check the website for any updates, download them if needed. Okay, now you're ready to launch Cubase and begin setting up the internal connections. To do this, open the device menu and select Device Setup. This dialog is where you control all of the connections between Cubase and external hardware. On the left side of the window, you can select what device you want to configure. For this video, we're only going to configure devices for MIDI and audio. Once selected, the right side of the screen is where you adjust the various settings. Let's set up our MIDI interface by selecting All MIDI Inputs. MIDI output is used if you're controlling external instruments and devices, and we'll leave that alone for now. You can also choose which ports to show or hide. By hiding items that you don't use, the MIDI input menu in the inspector is a little more streamlined. Before we go any further, I want to explain three terms. ASIO, VST, and Latency. ASIO stands for Audio Stream Input Output. ASIO is a digital audio protocol designed by Steinberg that allows for extremely high speed and high fidelity connections between applications like Cubase and your sound card. ASIO's direct high speed communication with the sound card makes it possible to process multiple high quality channels at one time. The term VST stands for Virtual Studio Technology, and it's another Steinberg innovation. VST is what allows for the seamless integration of software, plugins, and hardware. VST also allows for connections that mimic a traditional recording studio. In other words, VST connections are what link all parts of the Cubase environment together. The last term I want to touch on is latency. Latency is the short period of time, usually milliseconds, that it takes for an audio signal to be processed by a digital system. Latency results from analog to digital conversion, buffering, and signal processing. The more signal processing you apply to a signal, the more latency it introduces. Latency is primarily a factor when recording live audio. If the latency value is too large, the performer will hear a delay similar to an echo between the time that they play or sing a note and when they hear it in their headphones. Next. Let's move to the VST audio device and look at ways to control latency as we finish configuring our device. You select the ASIO driver for your audio interface here. We'll pick the Yamaha FireWire device, which is the MR816. Now below it, Cubase tells you how much latency the driver will introduce while processing the incoming signal. As a rule of thumb, anything above about 5 milliseconds will begin to become noticeable. Now you can reduce latency by reducing the interface's buffer, which is also its working memory. However, if you set the buffer size too low, you risk introducing pops and clicks. So in a nutshell, it's a balancing act between buffer size and latency. Now the specifications of your computer will determine how low you can go before these problems begin. The more powerful your computer is, the lower you can set the buffer before experiencing problems. Now, on the other hand, when you're mixing, we recommend that you set the buffer size to a larger value to get the best performance out of your computer. 
An even better way to eliminate latency during recording is using the direct monitoring feature if your interface supports it. Direct monitoring sends the live signal back to the musician directly from the interface before any processing takes place, so no latency is introduced at all. Okay, we now have the MIDI and audio devices configured. Let's look at how to set up all the various connections within Cubase so we can begin to record. Under the Device menu, find VST Connections. The VST Connections window is the control center for all of your internal routing. Use the tabs at the top to select which family of connections you want to work with. Let's start with the inputs. Another key term that you're going to see a lot in Cubase is the word bus. Using buses is straightforward. Just like a real bus picks up people at a station and drops them at any of several locations along a route, an audio bus takes a signal from one source and makes it available to any destination. So when we set up an input bus, we're creating a route within Cubase for the incoming signal. This means that an incoming signal can be routed to one track, several tracks, a combination of tracks and devices, and so forth. Let's set up two input buses so that we can record a piano and a voice on separate tracks. Click Add Bus. Select what configuration you want to use and how many buses you want to add. Let's keep things simple and just add two monophonic buses. Now we can name the buses. These names will be displayed in the track inspector and on the mixer to help you identify the incoming signal. You can also choose which physical input on the interface that you want to use. And once you have all this set up, you can save the configuration as a preset. This will help you re-establish all your connections quickly if your interface goes offline. Now let's configure the output bus. We should be fully connected, but if you get stuck, you can use the new setup wizard to get things sorted out. For example, if you don't hear any sound from Cubase, the wizard will guide you through a troubleshooting solution. Okay, let's move on to the next video and start recording.